Okay, let's do this. All right, we are in the barn and it is cold. It is cold. I was looking back at some of our first lectures and I'm wearing a tank top and everything. Yeah, not so anymore. Okay, so um, yeah, anyway, welcome to the barn. Um, I had a pen here that I was gonna use. What did I do with it? Oh well, I found a pretty color pen. Um, so I hope you're ready for a new chapter. So we are going to start chapter five today. And five, chapter five starts with what we call antiderivatives. Okay, so as the name kind of implies, we're doing the opposite. So we've learned how to take the derivative. Okay, we've done that for all sorts of different functions, all sorts of different rules. And now we're gonna go backwards. So the idea is if I gave you the derivative, could you give me the original function? Okay, so we're going backwards. Let me see where are my notes. So we start off with this definition, which uh, it's not the most user friendly, and, we're, and because of it, we're going to change to something else in a little bit, but this is how we start off with. We say a function, capital F, is an antiderivative of little f if at capital F prime of x is equal to little f of x. Okay, so if we start with little f of x, then it is the derivative of capital F of x. So instead of normally going one further and going finding the derivative, now we're going to start here, but we're going to go backwards, but we don't necessarily have notation for that. So that's the deal with this capital F and, and little f baloney. But as I said, it's a little bit tricky right now, but we're going to change it in a couple minutes. Okay. So let's just start with an example here. So let's say if little f of x was 3x squared, I want you to find capital f of x. So the idea is this is already the derivative. So what we need to ask ourselves is what function has 3x squared as its derivative? So think about that for a second. And then I want you to think, wouldn't that be x cubed? Isn't the derivative of x cubed 3x squared? Okay. So they gave us the derivative. We're giving them the original function. There's a but though. So whenever we're finding the antiderivative, we're going backwards, we need to include a constant. And as an example here, I'm gonna say, if this looked like x cubed plus seven, would this still be the derivative? If this was x cubed plus 17,311, is this still the derivative? Because the derivative of that guy is just zero. So the idea is when we find an antiderivative, we always have to make the assumption that there could have been a constant because its derivative is zero. So there could be a constant. Now, we're not gonna use just any old number there. We're gonna let that constant be a capital C, okay? So x cubed plus C. And that constant just stands there as a placeholder because now when I take the derivative, I get three x squared plus zero. Okay, so we're always going to remember to do that constant, plus c, plus c. Okay. All right, let's look at another one here. <clears throat> let's say if f of x is x cubed, find capital F of x. Okay, so this one is not quite as nice as the last one. But the thing to remember is that this is the derivative. This is the derivative and we wanna go backwards. So that means when you think about this, if we're going backwards, it means our exponent is going to go up, not down. Do you agree? So it's gonna go x to the fourth. But then we need to do something else here. And this is where it gets a little bit ugly. We're going to divide by that, expo by that exponent. So we're gonna divide by four. Now, why are we doing that? Because if you take the derivative here, 
the derivative of this part would be 4x cubed, but we didn't want 4x cubed. We want to get rid of the 4, boop. And so in order to get rid of the 4 that would have been outside, we cancel it out with a 4 on the bottom. So if there's not a number out here, like we had here, this guy worked perfect because it was the exact derivative. This one is not exact, so we're gonna divide by the exponent in order to get the f of little, little f of x. And then once we've done that, we're gonna go plus c. Plus c, every single time. Okie dokie. Um, now, as I, as I said just a, you know, a minute ago, this notation of little f of x and capital F of x is, is tedious and it's very easy to start making mistakes or not understand what someone's asking you for. So we need to get a, a better notation here. Okay, so this new notation we're gonna talk about is integral notation. So we'll say indefinite integral notation Actually, let's just put this. So indefinite integral note is notation for finding the anti-derivative. And this is what it looks like. It looks kind of like a, a, like a long extended S. Okay, that's the integral. And then you're going to put the function inside, and then you're going to follow it by dx. Remember when we talked about differentials? Okay. So what this is telling us is that this is the integral of this function, so find the antiderivative, that's what that guy says, of this function with respect to x. And respect to x is what we normally do, so that's, that's not, not, shouldn't be any trouble. But every integral will always come with a dx. Always, always, integral and the dx. So this is the integral sign, symbol. And this guy in here, this is called the integrand. So if you're doing homework or whatever and it says find the integrand or use the integrand, it just means the guy in, in the um, integral notation. So again, what this says is find the antiderivative of f of x with respect to x. So instead of having to do if little f find capital F, now I can ask you to find oops, hold on, the integral of, let's go, um, x squared dx. Okay, always followed by that dx, it has to be there. So integral of x squared dx. So find the antiderivative of this guy. Now, we just talked about the fact that if we're going backwards, this exponent is gonna go up by one. So it's gonna to go to an x cubed, but there was no three out in front, so that means over here in the, in the antiderivative, we're gonna divide by three. And remember, you can always check your answer by finding the antiderivative, or sorry, finding the derivative of this guy and making sure it matches the original. And then you're all proud of yourself, okay? But don't forget, plus c. Okay, let me just tell you a little story about the whole plus c thing. All right, so remember, I'm standing in front of you here, you know, up here because I am a math nerd. So don't, don't feel bad about this. But when I took calculus, when we were doing integrals, I had an A plus. I had gotten 100% on, on everything up to this test. And I wanted to make sure that I didn't forget the C. So when I got the test, the first thing that I did where, where I was going to put my answer is I put plus C, plus C, plus C, plus C for every single answer. And then I was like, oh, I'm covered. Well, two of the problems were word problems and there was no plus C on the end because that didn't make any sense. And my instructor marked me down. I lost two points because I put plus C when I shouldn't have put plus C. Okay. Those are the only two points I lost in the whole entire class. So it's something that I really remember, but it actually backfired on me. But so I don't want you to, you know, I need you to remember the plus C 
but always kind of think about it. Don't just put it every time. Think about when you want it and when you don't. So when you find the integral, the antiderivative, you write down the function, add plus c. Okay. All right. So let's look at some um, examples here, or some, uh, let's call these rules. So let's look at some rules. So the first thing that we're going to see is taking the um, antiderivative of a constant. So let's say that, that we were taking the antiderivative, let's say that f of x was just 4. Okay, what you need to ask yourself is what function has a derivative of just 4? Okay, and the, what function that would be would be 4x, right? If we take the derivative of 4x, do we end up back with just 4? So whatever that constant is in there, when you find the integral of k dx, this is like taking k and multiplying it by x. Plus e. Okay, so those are the nice ones. If it's a constant, you just put an x on the end. Then we have the next one. This is the rule that we have just been using these past couple times. If we have the integral of x to the n power dx, then in order to find the antiderivative, we're going to go x to the n plus 1. We go up an exponent, and we divide by n plus 1. Okay, up an exponent and divide. So remember, it's the opposite of what we've been doing. So to find an, a derivative, you go down by an exponent, and you multiply by the number. So this is the opposite. Go up and divide. Okay. And then don't forget your plus C. All right. So again, as a little example here, let's say that you had x to the fifth. I'm sorry, the integral of x to the fifth dx. I got to get in the habit of the integral sign too, just like you guys do. So if we want the antiderivative, we're going to go x to the sixth over six plus C. Okay, now some other examples that we might see um, underneath here. So let's see, we've got two rules there. But another one might look like this. What if we have the square root of x dx? Again, the integral of the square root of x dx. Okay, now just like we were, if we were taking the derivative and we're going backwards, we want to do the same thing and rewrite. Okay, so we rewrite it. Now again, we need to go up by one. So if we add one or two over two here, we're gonna be at three over two. So this is gonna be x to the three halves divided by three halves. Now I don't ever want you to leave that like that. So let's think about that. If we're dividing by three halves, whoop, it's actually like taking, oops, three, no, not three, hello, have not brain part here. So flip and multiply, so it'll be two-thirds x to the three halves. So we can most definitely do this with, with fractions, okay? We just have to think about it, and it's not as pretty as, as before, okay? And then don't forget your pussy. Okay. Now, The next rule says if you have the derivative, or sorry, the antiderivative, the integral of, um, I don't know why my brain isn't working all of a sudden. It must be too cold in here for my brain to work. C times f of x dx. Okay, so if what you, you've got a function in here, whatever the function is, but it's multiplied by a constant, then that constant can come out front and you can just multiply it by the integral of f of x dx. Now this is nice, it's the same rule, derivative or antiderivative here. It just basically says that a constant always comes along for the ride, okay? Constant always comes along for the ride. So as an example on this one, let's say we had uh, 4x to the sixth dx, okay? Now, that four is not, it's not really helping us at all. It's just a constant out there on the front, which means that it's just gonna come along with us as we go to take the antiderivative. 
Then we're gonna go x to the seven over seven. And you see how the four just sits there? No big deal. Okay. And our plus c. Okay, another example here. Let's say we had, what do we have this time? The integral of two x 